So, Dr. Dr. Honigman, this is uh, Dr. Bloor interrupting for a moment. I'm s sorry to interrupt your flow here, but I'm just amazed by the changes for these patients that you've shared to date. What has this meant for you as a periodontist with regards to your case acceptance? Well, case acceptance has actually gone up. I didn't, uh, when I first got the laser, I wasn't uh, prepared to have all the cases accepted as much as I, as much as I expected, actually. Um, because once patients find out that there's no cutting and no sewing, all of a sudden that you can just see the anxiety drain from their face when you say, look, I can do this with a laser and we're not going to do, uh, we're not going to be cutting and removing gum tissue. And I think that is the patient's biggest fear is the minute they hear they're being referred to the periodontist, what they're hearing is, I need gum surgery. And when you can tell them we're going to do surgery but with a laser and we're not going to use a scalpel or, or sutures, they're much more, I get a higher, a much higher acceptance rate um, than uh, when I did when I was doing traditional gum surgery. Also, interesting enough, and you'll see in some later slides, my, the cost of the patients actually go down because I'm not doing any as much uh, bone regeneration procedures because you'll see in probably another five or six slides how we get bone regeneration with LANAP. And that to me is amazing and doesn't matter how many times I've, I see it, I still get very excited when I see bone growth and vertical defects. And the patients see it in my face how excited I get about it too. Wow, so what I'm hearing is that your overhead's going down <laughs> also. Well, well, yeah, my overhead goes down because I don't have to have um, money put into keeping enough bone or endogain or uh, regenerative materials. Uh, my money can be put towards what I need to be put towards. So I don't have to keep a stock of stuff um, always, always around just in case. Very good. All right. So just to continue on with this patient now, you can see we went from 109 pockets of six winters more down to 11. That to me is amazing. And the patient was very happy. I was, I think I, I get happier, more ecstatic than the patients do. Sometimes they don't quite get it, but you know, you say, I, what I could have put you through, this is, this is really great. I love it. If we go to the next slide now, again, now this patient here, this is an interesting patient here. Um, she's a elderly lady. Well, elderly. That's a relative term, I guess, these days. She's in her uh, late 60s, early 70s, and she came in to see me, and I'm going to show you specifically really for tooth number, well, she wants to see me for her pocket disc, but she wants to see me specifically for um, tooth, number, uh, tooth number nine. I'm going to give you a blow up of that. Uh, she had gone to see an oral surgeon ahead of us, and the oral surgeon thought, oh, well, it could be cancer. We don't know. You're probably going to be losing the tooth because she had a lot of inflammation, a lot of pus coming out. I mean, they just didn't know what it was. We went ahead, and we did LANAP on her because she has some other pockets. And from this slide, you can see we went from 41 pockets of 6, millimeter, six, six millimeters or more down to 5. That is a great decrease in, in, in the pocket depth. But if we look at the slide that I just put together specifically for that in tooth number nine, what you can see is we started with a nine and a seven and a nine on the palatal and at least a 10 on the palatal. And I told the patient I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to save this tooth. You know, if it was any other office, they would have said, you know what, we just got to extract it, bone graft it, let it heal, place an implant, and that was it. Well, she would like to try to save her tooth. And I said, look, we're doing one up anyway. Let's go ahead and see what what can happen? Well, we went ahead, and at the probing depths that came back, you can see we went from a 9 down to a 3, a 7 to a 2, a 9 to a 3, a 10 to a 3. So basically, LANAP, not trying to make a pun here, but screwed me out of an implant. So anyway, but that was fine by me because now, ironically, I just saw her today, and she's off to her orthodontist now to get her uh, teeth straightened because now that the tooth is saved, she wants to uh, have uh, nice straight teeth. But what we have here now is uh, to look at the slides. This is, I do cats, I have a cat scan machine in my office, I have a Galileos, and um, I do cat scans with my patient. The only time uh, on all my patients who come in for perio, implants, you name it. But the only time you can tell about palatal bone growth is really on a cat scan. You can't really see it on a two dimensional x ray. So what you see here is a, um, a, the cross sectional view of the tooth, and you can see how how much bone we've lost in this area here. So here's her around her CJ, and you can see the, this is where the defect was. The next slide now, so I went ahead, I took another CAT scan on her at the time that we did her uh, probing depths, and now you can see 
ooh, what's that? That looks like bone there. And we saw the decrease in the pocket depth from, from a, at least an, a 10 to a 3. But the really cool picture is this one. This is the axial view, so this is looking down through the top. And here you can see, you can see the defect here, how large the defect is. If you would show this x-ray to any other periodontal office, what you would see is they would say, let's take the tooth out, bone grafted, implant, go to town. This is what the tooth looked like after Lynette. That's all bone around that area here. That is amazing. That, to me, is one of my favorite pictures and just demonstrates the power that Lenap can do. That's incredible, Dr. Honigman. And just looking back at that slide, it's just amazing to see it um, in this way. I, You know, we have some questions coming in. One of the questions that has come up is, um, and before you answer it, <laughs> okay. let, let me uh, let everyone know that although this is not a live chat where we're taking the uh, questions directly, uh, we are keeping track of them, and if we don't cover them during the course of the presentation, we will have someone else, um, a, a sales rep in the area or a laser consultant in the area, follow up with you in answering the questions. So please uh, use the chat function and type them in, and if I don't get them covered during the presentation, we will follow up with it. But the question comes up, um, can you use any laser to do this? No, you can't, actually. Um, the NDAG, you have the, there's a lot of laser physics involved. And when I first started with, uh, with Lenap, laser, to me, a laser was a laser was a laser. After learning the laser physics during our uh, evolution one, two, and three, and the differences in laser, you realize that not every laser can do this. The tissue has a say in what goes on. And if you have a laser, such as an erbium or CO2, that is only absorbed in water, it's not going to have the penetrating power that NDAG has because it's not absorbed in water. It's absorbed past that point. It's absorbed just in the melanin which is really what the periodontal pathogens are, our black pigmented bacteria. And it actually has a penetration quality to it that it actually goes beyond the point of where it's entering the tissue. So you can't do this really any predictable way with any other laser except an NDAG, and you can't do it. It has to be a, free, a, a digital free-running pulse laser so you can get the high peak, what we call the peak powers, when if you decide to get the laser, you will learn more about that. Um, high peak powers um, that a diode, that a lot of people can say you get this with a diode, you can't get this with a diode because it just doesn't have the power or the oomph to be able to do the type of work that we can do with the periolase. I hope that answers the question. Thank you. So, no problem. <laughs> so let's go on. This is kind of a 3D view. Um, it's a little little cloudy, but what you can see here is this is what the oh, – I'm going to get a little markup tool. Here's, here's the defect right here. This is what it looked like when she came in, and this is approximately 13 months later now. You can see how it has filled in now in that area. So let's go on, and this is another case similar to the one we just saw. And I'm going to move on because we ended up doing one app on him, but he came in specifically because of tooth number nine and tooth number ten. And what you can see, I know it's, it's not as great as I would like it to be, but what we have is we have some sixes. We have a nine on the, pal on the palatal of number nine. We have bleeding, suppuration. Here on number ten, you can see he's got at least some ten millimeter pockets here. So we then had did one app. And what you can see here, this is now a six-month uh, post uh, uh picture of him in terms of his probing depths. I happen to be giving a lecture uh, at my father-in-law study club, and I wanted to prove to him how LANAP works, so I need to take some early measurements on him. But basically what you can tell is where there were nines and tens before, we now have a five. That's a five-millimeter pocket on number 10 on the mesial, and the rest are just basically threes, no bleeding, no separation, et cetera. Went ahead. Here's our CAT scan look, and like I said, really from the axial view, what you can see here is here's the defect again, and here's the defect on number 10. It's coming right there, and the defect on number 9. I'm looking at the interproximal defect now between 9 and 10. That's where we had at least a 10 millimeter pockets. This way look like six months later after one out. Once again, you can see how... See how the defect is filled in? In this area, it's beginning to fill in right here. 
And look at the interproximal defect. Look how it's starting to fill in also. Now, remember, this is only six months out, so I still expect this to fill in. And by adjusting his occlusion to keep any stress off the area, I expect to see 100% bone fill in these areas and a maintenance of his pocket depth.